Hey everybody, Steve here. Welcome to video two in this Kakute F7 FPV racing drone build. If you by chance missed video one, there is a link to the playlist in the description. In video one, we talked about all of the parts of an FPV racing quadcopter and just kind of did an overview uh, to set things up for this video where we're going to actually start the actual build. So let's begin at the begin and uh, I'm going to start with the frame. All right, so something I wanted to reiterate from the first video is that this is my first F7 build. So I'm intending this to be just kind of a follow along with me as opposed to a how-to video. Uh, even though I've been into drones for about 10 years, the bulk of my experience is in much larger videography and photography platforms. So uh, I made my first foray into FPV racers a couple years ago, built uh, a few uh, F3s and uh, one F4, but this is my first F7. So take that in stride as you're watching. I may make a mistake along the way, but chances are if you're watching this video, everything worked out just fine. And the first thing I always do uh, when I get these things is I make sure that I've got all my pieces because the last thing I want to do is start a build and then realize I ain't got everything. All right, so there we are. We are we are good to go. So essentially, real quick, the way this is going to work, this will be my lower level right there. And then this guy will go on top of him and then this guy will go on top of him. Just occurred to me that I used the word racing quadcopter earlier. I think um, I don't really intend to race with this particular quadcopter. I'm more of a freestyle flyer. And you'll notice that this frame is a bit larger than what you see on the market right now as of 2020. And the reason for that is because I fly equal parts line of sight and FPV. And when I'm flying line of sight, I'm kind of old, so I don't see that well. Um, so I fly a little bit larger quad than some of those other guys because helps me to be able to see it better when I'm flying line of sight. So as you've probably noticed, I do speed up the film here. Uh, I don't think it's necessary to show the screwing in of every single nut, bolt, and screw. Uh, I think you get a picture. I'm intending for this to be an overview. Uh, just as of this point right here, I'm putting the motors on the arms first, and here we will be uh, putting the arms on the frame. All right, so moving along here, I am test fitting uh, for the receiver, trying to figure out a place to put it and um, also uh, test fitting and getting the flight controller ready to get on the frame. All right, so here I am beginning the soldering process and uh, I've been soldering for many years and I still suck at it. Uh, but all I can tell you is some of my lessons learned is uh, trying to don't use lead free solder. I mean, it's good for the environment, but it, it's really, really hard to solder, especially for beginners. Uh, so use a 6040 rosin core. Uh, I always start with the power first because the wires are the thickest and it's the hardest to solder. I use a 14 gauge uh, silicone wire for that. And as you can see, I'm tinning here and, uh, and then I'll go ahead and apply the wires. Okay, so here is a speed through of the actual soldering of the receiver to the flight controller. But don't worry, at the end of this scene, in about another 10 seconds or less, uh, I'll go slow and I'll show exactly how I wired everything up. What we want to do is we want to look at these pinouts right here. All right. What is important to note is the order of which these wires are coming out of the receiver, it's black, red, yellow, green. All right, so if we take a look at the directions that come with this thing, black is ground, red is five volts, yellow is the S port, and green is the S bus out. And essentially what I've done is I just followed the directions that came with this Hollybro. So here's the directions online at the Hollybro website. I got to say that these directions were put together very, very well, and it's really, they, they couldn't make it any simpler. Let's take a look at the first thing that's relevant. You must use a receiver that supports a serial protocol such as SBUS. All right, check. We got that one taken care of. All right, so for all receiver types, solder the receiver signal wire to the pad in R6. We have identified the green wire or our fourth wire as our SBUS because it says so right here, the fourth one down. And what they're telling us to do with it is they're telling us to go to R6. Well, where's R6? R6 is circle number one, number two, number three. So if we go to R quad, 
We've got circle number one, circle number two, circle number three is the green wire, and that is on R6. All right. Note, note that the red one is going here and the black one is going here. The black is on ground. You can actually see ground right there. You can't see what the red one is, but that's the five volt source. And then the yellow one is our smart port and that was going to TX4. And that's exactly where ours is going. And you can see where this is ground. You can see where the second dot is five volts. And then two more up is, is the TX4. So now I'm gonna install the flight controller onto the frame using the standoffs. Before you plug in your flight controller for the first time, it is absolutely, hear me out here, absolutely mandatory that you do some sort of continuity test to make sure that you're not shorted out somewhere. Or if you'd rather, you can spend 11 bucks and get one of these, or you can also make one on your own. I can't believe I'm actually saying this, but I left mine laying around and my dog decided to chew on it. And I attempted to fix it, but I've just got another one to order. This is a, I don't remember, $50 board, something like that. Uh, if I plug in the battery and my positive and my negative are uh, touching, then um, bye-bye board. So continuity test. Set your multimeter to the, to the one with the little sound indicator. And if you get a beep over here, then don't plug it in. First thing I'm going to do is touch them here. And I don't have a sound. That's a good thing. Now I'm going to come down here on the board and see if they're all right. So that's on the board. And if I move the red one over and touch the black one, what I've done was try to make sure that I'm not going to short out from my first power up. All right, so my guess is that we're probably eight to 10 minutes in for this video. I think we've gotten to a good stopping point. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up video number two right now. So in the next video, we're gonna wire up our ESCs and who knows what else will get accomplished. We'll just, you'll just have to subscribe and uh, come back and we'll get there when we get there. So please do me a favor and subscribe to the channel. Hit the little bell so that you get notifications when the new videos come out. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, tell somebody out there. Word of mouth is the best way for me to grow the channel so that I can continue making videos for you. All right. I appreciate you staying with me to the end. I'm Steve signing off for video two. See you in the next video.